What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Just Saying Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Martindale, and have we got a nice summer kickoff episode for you guys. I'm so excited for this week's guest. You know him as a writer, a television host, author, podcaster, but we all knew him and loved him when he appeared as a VJ on MTV's TRL. That's right. Today, we have the one, the only, Mr. Dave Hall. Hello. My Whoa. God. Hello, Justin. How are you? I mean, I'm so excited that you're here. Because Thanks, man. Me too. You were just everywhere. Always busy, always working. I am. Keeping the children educated. I'm trying. On where they need to be educated as far as pop culture goes. No, I try. Why we are in this musical... Um, I feel like renaissance that we're in now. It's a good, it's a good pop music summer. It is. is. It not? It is. Ooh. It is really. I mean, I, I have. I, we'll, we'll get into that a little later. Okay, but I'm I hope just so. Just like, whew, I'm yeah. feeling it. Yeah, I am too. Because I, I am too. Like summer is just the perfect time for music, and if you don't have like a good summer bop, then mm -hmm. what are you doing? Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's it's pool party season. Mm -hmm. You know, you you want something uh, something bouncy. Mm -hmm. You know. And what, uh, yeah. It's, what are it's you doing summer. for the summer? Like any summer fun plans? Or? Uh, I, well, I, did, I took a trip to Italy last month. Nice. Uh, yeah, which was great. First um, time? First time ever. Nice. I loved it. Mm -hmm. I'm learning the language now. I'm dying to go back. Really? Do you, yeah. <laughs> with Babbel, the, the Babbel app? Um, Duolingo. <laughs> Duolingo. And the Coffee Break Italian podcast, which oh. is very good. Little 20-minute episodes. They tell you just what you need to know. Um, it's it's enough information to be useful, but not so much that it's overwhelming. Nice. Yeah, I'm a really big fan. But yeah, uh, I was in uh, Bologna and Venice for a couple of weeks, and that was, it was heaven. Yeah. Um, their snacking and drinking culture is really leaps do. and bounds ahead of ours. They don't even have like full meals unless they have to. Yeah. Like if their Nona makes spaghetti on Sunday. That's you know what exactly I mean? exactly right. It's just snacking, wine. Yes. Lunches that go on for three and a half hours. <gasps> it's like, it's great. Yeah. It's just good a, shit. A, a midnight espresso. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, why not? It's great. And like, yeah, and, and you're constantly active and walking around and mm -hmm. whatever. I, I don't know. I loved it. It's um, great. And then, yeah, for the rest of it, no, nah, you know, no huge plans. There's um, here in Los Angeles, uh, there's a tradition at Barnstall Park in Los Feliz. Okay. Uh, on Friday nights, they do Silver Lake Wine comes in and does wow. like a wine tasting. Oh, we'll have to go and to that. It's so great. Yeah. Um, and it's, this is the first one back since COVID. Oh. So, so we've been hitting that a bunch. Uh, and then, you know, we got a pool. So we're just constantly, you know, it's, this last week was the first one that it was like so hot yeah. that there was basically nothing to do but Isn't be in that the pool. kind of crazy? Like how we had two, three weeks of like, marine layer and then yeah. all of a sudden it was just like hellfire yeah and, immediate. and people are already complaining they're like it's too hot i'm like hey at least we're Take not it. in other parts of the country or yeah. the world like yeah. it was like 125 in saudi arabia people are in the shade dead people are just dropping dead it is like june we're not even in like july mm -hmm. august september yet Woo. yeah it's rough my uh i grew up in st louis and yeah i just feel like i feel bad a lot you know, of my brick. poor mom can't really like go outside yeah. it's too hot yeah anyway. my mom's in new mexico okay and yeah, she's that's like rough. well i'm in the bunker yeah she's like oof and it's still 125 in the bunker but ah, i just want to get into it let's do it you um so you said you grew up in st louis yep and where did i because i remember you from the actual want to be a vj contest and i watched uh -huh. it religiously uh -huh. i think i Good. voted oh well multiple I hope so. times Okay. And um, I'm not going to ask you who you voted for. I Does voted he... for you. Oh, thank you. I did. Thank you. It was not that Jesse Camp person. Well, no. listen, everything worked out. I have no complaints. For I'm you, trying to yes. figure out what your <laughs> tattoo says. Does it say it's super sugar food? Foot. Okay. It says super food. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sugarfoot. What what is the meaning? My my uh my uh grandfather worked for Elvis Presley. Oh wow. And so my grandfather had a horse that Elvis bought that was my mom's horse. And mm -hmm. long story short, Elvis took my mom's horse after my grandfather told Elvis, you can have any horse, just don't take my mom's horse or take my daughter's horse. And uh -huh. Priscilla was like, I want that one. And my mom to this day is like, damn you, Priscilla. Wow. So, yeah. So this was just like drunk in San Diego, like with Jesse Mae Peluso. So wow, we yeah. okay. Yeah. So it's a it's a fun one. That's but rough. Elvis. Where, what what do you remember before even like trying out for the VJ position? Mm -hmm. What sparked your interest with the you know the the genre of music videos? Well, I mean, I grew up on MTV. Yes, you know, MTV of came course. out. MTV started when I was ten. Eighty four. 
81. 81? Yeah. Wow. And so, and look, my family didn't have cable, but my friend down the street did have cable. And so I would spend a lot of time at his house just like this close to the TV watching it. And it, and it seemed like, like the, the, the music that they were playing on MTV was a little weird mm -hmm. because it was like these young British bands because they yeah. were the first to like really embrace music video. So it was like freaky pop music, like Duran Duran and Spandau Ballet, it, which Kajagoo. doesn't seem freaky now. Yeah. Kajagoo, yeah. No, it doesn't sound freaky now, but like, you know, at the time, the radio was playing like Kenny Rogers and Sheena right. Easton and kind of boring stuff. Um, and so I just, I I loved it. I had, I had always loved music. I'm, you know, I'm Irish, so it's... You love a you jig. Know, I do love a jig and a reel. <laughs> um, but there was always music playing in the house. And it was sort of, you know, my my brothers were so much older than me that there wasn't a whole lot that we could do. Like we couldn't, you know, the, we were not matched for sports and mm -hmm. I don't like them anyway. And um, so like the one thing that we could do was like like the same music. So I sort of, you know, I, I listened to a lot of music just to try to keep up with them. Um, and then MTV happened. I was glued to that. We finally got cable in 84, 85. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I just, I've always been a big like pop culture enthusiast. Yeah. Um, and I, and I never, like, I never in a million years imagined that my obsessions in that department could ever like be like fuel what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. It never, it never, you know, in St. Louis, Missouri, there was really nobody who would like, there was, you know, if you wanted to be on TV, you'd be like the weatherman or something. Mm -hmm. um, but Dream big, kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I, I wasn't quite sure where to like put those obsessions. I didn't know I could have a life like I have now. Sure. Um, so I, I moved to New York. I worked in advertising and didn't like it. And uh, and then called in sick to work one day and tried out. Yeah, What was there like a listing or like, yeah. yo, yeah. you want to be a VJ? Um, put in a tape and all that stuff? Yep. Yeah, there was a uh, there was an article. Well, I saw it on Billboard.com because I checked the charts every Tuesday. I guess it was. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and there was a story about it there. And then they started running promos on the network about I, it. I think I and, saw that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I don't think I understood the degree to which it would be televised. Mm -hmm. This whole open call, um, but yeah, so that like I called in sick and I and I auditioned on a Monday. And then I got called back in uh, for the top 10 on Wednesday. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday was the thing. And that, like, it was six days and it was all over. Yeah. You know? Uh, and then over was the course just, of the next few yeah, was weeks. It, was it just like Jeopardy where you're just like cramming in your hotel room? No, all this, no, like, no. And I wasn't in a hotel. No. I lived in New York at the time. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it was, uh, I, I, there wasn't a lot to cram for, really. It was mm -hmm. sort of, like, I already knew a lot about music, and um, yeah, so there wasn't a whole lot to prepare. I didn't really, you know, this thing didn't exist yet, you know, they, right. it was the first one, so I kind of just showed up and hoped for the best. You got down to the final two. I did. And you were with Jesse Camp, mm -hmm. who was, if you don't remember Jesse Camp, he was like this really tall, skinny guy, mm -hmm. seemed like he was on drugs maybe then kind of maybe allegedly mm -hmm. yeah, uh big yeah. flowy hat a lot of yeah a lot like, of uh, a lot storms. of look a big look a big look yeah and then you from st louis and then yeah, yeah. me sort of you know in my class ring and my you know <laughs> no. uh, polo shirt oh for sure um yeah so yeah it was it was you know honestly the whole thing really was so quick mm -hmm. um, that I never had time to like be nervous or to worry about anything. It was just like, okay, I guess this is happening. But they used, so, but Jesse won, but they continued mm -hmm. to use you as they well. Did. Yeah. Which is great. So yeah. You didn't win and you still got a job there. I did get a job there. It started uh, as a writing job. Okay. I, I wrote on some like weekend specials, maybe. Uh, Wanna Be VJ was in April. So like early May, they started to like bring me in to, to work on some stuff. And then just like, because I was around the the offices and walking the hallways and stuff, um, this was just before the summer. They debut a lot of new shows in the summer. Mm -hmm. You know, they had Jesse Camp, who was like a character, but sure. was not super great at like reading words off a and reading. teleprompter, <laughs> you know, or, or, or conducting like a, an interview that was, you know, taking place on planet Earth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and so they needed, you know, somebody who was able to do those kinds of things. And I tested for some stuff and one of them got picked up and here we are. Yeah. So 20, okay. that was all like 26 years ago. Mm -hmm. Seems like yesterday, doesn't it? 
It does. It's so crazy too, because I just see like all these trends coming back. And I, I had mentioned this, I can't remember if this was last week or not, but I'm seeing this now where I am out in public and hearing songs like Ace of Base, Happy Nation, which was just featured on X-Men 97, Ooh. which was like a huge deep cut. Wasn't even like yeah. a single, but I'm yeah. hearing that in public. Rhythm is a dancer. Like all this like early 90s pop is coming back. And uh -huh. I'm just like, what? Like it's so, and I was in Texas. It's weird. It's very, very it? strange. And I asked like the listeners, I was like, have y'all heard any like weird, like LaBouche will just come on and mm -hmm. I'm here for it. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Yeah. But um, so it's so, wild, huh? So you're there. I'm there. TRL is at its biggest like height ever. Um, What was that like? I mean, you got to see everybody who's everybody yeah. at TRL. That was, yeah, that was really something. Um, Yeah, TRL started, there was a show called MTV Live that became TRL and that was all from the, um, you know, from the studio with the big windows and whatever. And then they, then they started uh, TRL in mm -hmm. like September of, of that year. And, and it was sort of, um, you know, the boy band thing and the, and the Britney and Christina thing hadn't quite like clicked in yet. So, MTV was still in a weird sort of like it wasn't sure who it was who it was and who yeah. it was for, and uh, and so like as the the boy bands and the girl groups started to get more popular, um, when they would come by the studio, ratings would go off the charts. So that like it became this moment, and and what you know the show that like nobody would come. I mean, people watched it kind of, but nobody would come to Times Square and look up at the studio. Suddenly, like, thousands of kids it was would show insane. up to Times Square. And then it was like, well, this is what every teenager is watching. So if you wanted to reach teenagers, you had to go on it. So suddenly it's like, you know, Tom Cruise is there and, and yeah. Jim Carrey's there. And, you know, anybody who wanted to, like, any, anybody who had a big project that they needed to promote had to swing by. It was, like, late night for teens. It was. But, like, in the afternoon. It was. I just remember, like, like you would see, like, Cameron Diaz for, like, Charlie's Angels mm -hmm. and Drew Barrymore and all them. And then you'd have, like, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think, like, uh, like, whoever the girl group was at the time. Like, I remember Desi's Child would show up. Oh, like, yeah. Yeah. All then, the time. And then they also did, like, we're going to introduce this new group that's coming in. Uh-huh. It was just so fascinating. Were there it any, was... like, core memories from TRL for you? Um, I, You know, it, the whole thing is, like, the whole experience is like, and I mean this in the best possible sure. way. Sure. But it's like a car accident. Perfect. In that, like, it's, you know how, like, I don't know if you've ever been in a car accident, but, like, in the moments afterwards, you're, like, you're 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 thinking very clearly and you're, you know, you're exchanging the information and you know, all that kind of thing. And then, like, later you react to it. Like, yeah. later you're just, like, oh, my neck. Or, or, or like, your femur sticking out of your skin. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. one of those. Like, yeah. your brain is, is, like, in shock, sometimes in actual shock, and, you you know, you're, like, you're moving through the world, mm -hmm. but you're not able to form memories because mm -hmm. your brain's like, you know, smooth. And that's how I feel. Like it, it's, I, now people are digitizing things and putting them up on YouTube and whatever. And somebody will send me something that I did in 1999 or whatever. And, uh, and, and I'm like, ah, well, look at that guy. <laughs> he looks like he's having fun. Like, I know it's me. It's yeah. my face and body and voice. But like I don't, I don't remember. I things, remember you because you know? I, I actually thought it, you were very funny because you were this like you, 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 you had fun, but you also were doing your job, mm -hmm. and I, I think you knew what your job was. So you get someone like crazy. You, I, I want to say uh, like maybe like corn or mm -hmm. or like a like a like. Eminem or like some of these guys would come on Limp Biscuit and yeah. they do something and you'd be like, okay, yeah, now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to be the, the sort of calm center yeah. amid the chaos. Yeah, um, which was always really fun. Like I'm, uh, I what I now know is that I have a raging case of ADHD, mm -hmm. and uh, and I didn't know it at the time, but like once I got put on live television as a host of a show with a million moving parts, I suddenly felt so calm. Like it, it was, you know, it's the kind of thing that would, like a normal person would have a nervous breakdown on mm -hmm. live television because it's chaotic and like the stress is really high. Um, but I felt like, oh, this is, oh, here I am. This is what I do. <laughs> you yeah. know, uh, that was a really nice feeling because I really never had that up until that point. Um, okay. So one memory I do have is, uh, and it, it wasn't in the studio. It, it was a TRL, but it wasn't in the studio. We had Tom Cruise, 
uh, for Mission Impossible 2. Oh. They had him just down the street at the uh, the Four Seasons on Doheny. Was he climbing it? Uh, he was not climbing it. <laughs> um, he does his own stunts, you yeah, guys. He's like, look what it can do. Yeah. <laughs> so he, it was like a junket type thing, uh -huh. right? Where he like goes from room to room and, talk, you know, he talks and there's the, you know, the poster behind him and all that kind of thing. So we, we did a bunch of segments with him because we were kind of, you know, building an episode around him. And he, um, and so there was like a small audience and it was in a, a room at the Four Seasons. And, uh, and I was with two of my like producers who were, you know, you know, 26 or whatever. We're all of like course. young. And, uh, and Tom Cruise walks in and uh, the producer of the segment, this guy, Dave George, who like runs the television world now, but that's another story. Um, Tom Cruise walks in, Dave George is like, hey, money, uh, come have a seat, whatever. And so we like, he sits down. We like, you know, we, or with him for maybe 45 minutes, he laughs at everything that I say in a way that is like, I am really connecting with Tom Cruise right now. Like we're, I think when this is over, we're going to be, be best friends. friends like, because sure. we are friends. So we'll probably <laughs> go out to dinner after this. Yeah. <laughs> and like, just unbelievable. Like he's so charismatic that he really makes you believe that like, you're in with him. So anyway, so we like do a bunch of segments. Uh, you know, we, director says cut. Tom Cruise is just gone, right? Like off to dazzle another room. And what I remember most vividly is Dave George walking to me afterwards and saying, did I call Tom Cruise money? Because he like, he walked in and was like, hey, money. And he's like, money. I have never in my life seen yeah. that. Like why on, what happened to me? That was that the moment? lingo. That was the, but hey, it, money. It, yeah, but it was, it was so, it was just like, he threw the whole thing. He was like, did I fucking call Tom Cruise yeah. money? I don't know. He does he does things to people. Well, was this like Katie Holmes, Tom Cruise, like when he jumped on Oprah's couch? That was later. That, that was would later? Be okay. later, I think. Yeah, this yeah. would have been 99. Okay, so yeah. So yeah, was she really was really... still on Dawson's Creek. Oh, what a time. What a time. God, I know. Now, James Vanderbeek is HRL. Everything. Every, like, uh, it, it's, it's so, so it's Joshua Jackson, actually, to mention. You know, yeah. It's, I it's, think of it. It's one of those things, too, where it's like, first of all, I want to do a documentary about the people who were on TRO. Mm. Where are they now? Where are they That now? girl name. I'm Stacy. I'm from Nebraska. And, I, oh, and they just explode oh, on camera. Like, yeah. what was their... What was their experience like? Yeah, they would, you know, I mean, the kids would just show up, yeah. you know, for the chance to scream at a window, yeah. you know, uh, go see a building and yell at it. Times were different. <laughs> Times were very different. We used to scream at windows. We used to scream at a window and that was enough. <laughs> we liked it. Um, but yeah, but sometimes, you know, they would get chosen to like do a quick little segment or whatever. And they'd, you know, work with a producer and, you know, get the, get their thoughts down. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, that, was, that, was, that was a truly wild time. Uh, everyone, of course, wanted to be led up into the studio and, and it, like believed that I would be able to bring them there, that I would, you know, that I had this magic key or whatever. I didn't. Um, <sighs> But yeah, it was a, it was a truly, you know, even though that that music probably, I think I would have liked it, mm -hmm. but it wouldn't have been my music probably if I didn't work at MTV. Mm -hmm. But I did, and and like to be there for this moment in pop music that is truly great, yeah, and that has held up, um, and, and to like, you know. 19, I was 13 in 1984, which was Madonna and Van Halen and Bruce Springsteen and mm -hmm. Purple Rain and Cindy and Lauper. Cindy Lauper yeah. and like impeccable year for pop music. Um, to be a part of someone else's 13 year old year right. yeah. um, with that music and, and that show. And they to, thought you were be, cool. May, I don't know if they did, yeah, but, but they to, like, did. to be a part of it in some small way yeah. it was like exciting. So we, we, everybody kind of, everybody loved the music, whether, you know, whether that was their genre or not. Mm -hmm. Like the, you know, the metalhead camera guy would be, you know, singing along with I Want It That Way. That's you know? what I was going to say is because I feel like today's generation of kids will never understand how, like, I don't even know how to describe it. Just, like, epic. Mm -hmm. How Like, you would have Britney Spears sometimes on the countdown, followed by uh, Korn, mm -hmm. followed by, like, uh, uh, Genie in a Bottle with mm -hmm. Du Hast by... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was their name? Du Hast. Uh, du Hast. Who, was that Rammstein? Rammstein, yeah. yes. Like, it was just this... The catalogs of just like a top 10 countdown of just every genre of music mm -hmm. back to back to back. And it was just the show. And it was like, okay, cool. And if you want to get your video to number one, call us now. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. And kids would 
call. Lose their minds. You can even go to MTV.com no. and vote that way. It was it had to be a phone call. It was such a thing that they had to retire the videos. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah, had to certain say, big ones. We're not showing this video anymore. Certain big ones they had to. God, yeah. It was I, truly, yeah. What a what a crazy beautiful moment, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't even know if they make music videos anymore. They do. I feel like they do, but oh, they like do. They do. But I feel like I feel like if they they should definitely bring those back. Yeah. Well, I, would I mean, love that. Yeah. No, like they, a I mean there are show. Yeah. There does need to be like a central pop culture mm -hmm. kind of place, mm -hmm. you know? There it does pop culture does need a home base. I mean, I guess I guess there's Andy's Clubhouse on Bravo yeah. kind of, but like you know, it's it's very weird because, like I said, we are in this summer is a great summer yeah. for pop music, and and we're watching like Chapel Roan become a massive, massive star, but like without an MTV to facilitate it. I know and it's without, sad. Like, <laughs> without like, I mean, I guess there's pop radio, but I don't know anyone who listens to it. I mean, it. it's all like you know, Sirius XM and like Kiss FM and yeah. iHeartRadio, but it's like. Like, I want, like, the visual of it. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and the, it, you know, and she and Sabrina Carpenter. Yes. And, you know, they're, they're, they're making really good music videos, but you just got to, like, go to YouTube and call them up. I know. You know there's it, nobody it, to, like, play them for you and then also be like, okay, so there's that thing that's huge. Now here's this that you might like mm -hmm. and, like, you know, give it to you the way that a human being does and not an algorithm. Exactly. You know? I, I completely agree with you on that because I just felt like it was such a different time. Artists would go into the studio. They'd have these, like, huge budgets with, like, these epic producers and green screens when they were a thing, mm -hmm. you know, and they would have a, you know, a million dollar budget. Ooh. Totally. And now it's just like, oh, I can produce this in my garage and put yep. it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh. Yeah. I uh, mean, listen, there's a lot that's great about living now. Yes. Um, Tell me. <laughs> yeah. But it's, you know, yeah, it's just, it's not, it's, um, it's, it's chaotic yeah. right now. I will say the media landscape is chaotic. It's just so oversaturated. And that's what I love about Chapel Rowan is she's put in the work. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. She's like been doing it for 10 years. It's one of those like keep at it stories. Uh -huh. Like we're rooting for you. We get it. Like I, I said this the other day. I said, finally, my Taylor Swift has arrived. All right. This is my Taylor Swift. She's your Taylor Swift. She's Great. my Taylor Swift. Okay. Because you know why? Because she's cool. She can belt. And I'm not saying Taylor yeah. can't. To some, yeah. You know, whatever. Yeah. She's cool. She can belt. She just has this like old, like Stevie Nicks quality about totally. her. But also like pop and disco and like she's queer and can, you know, she's for everybody. Yeah. She's for everybody. And she's just... Cool. Yeah, it's really it's really refreshing seeing this moment like come yeah. together yeah. for her. She like know? has drag queens open for her. Yeah. Like she's just she 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 helps other people out. Like, you know, not that Taylor doesn't, but it's like, you know, she had for her Fallon appearance, she had this like uh costume designer from I guess maybe like her hometown or something. I can't remember. Uh -huh. But like created this whole like feather number and he like did a video saying thank you. Like it's just cool rather than like, oh, I'm wearing a red lipstick. Ooh. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, she's she is something else. Yeah. I really like her. And I just feel like I don't know, I just need a break from Taylor Swift. Yeah, I have yet to be emotionally moved. Me by too. A Taylor Swift I thought I was song. alone. Yeah, no. I just, you she's know obviously very talented. Sure. But I yeah, I've never been yeah, I've never been like, oh, I gotta, I, I need to hear that again. I've been bored. Yeah, I'm gonna say it. I've been bored until this summer. Mm -hmm. This summer, I feel like last summer was kind of the, the egg cracking with Kylie Minogue. We uh -huh. had Renaissance with uh -huh. Beyonce, and I was like, oh, what yeah, is this happening? And then this summer, it's just yeah. Charlie XCX, her Brat album. Oui. I that mean, remix with Lord, sick, is great. I love it so much. The whole album, and yeah. I know I. I, I've known of Charlie XCX, obviously, but I wasn't like a big, like, Charlie XCX fan. I mm -hmm. saw her with Caroline Palachek when mm. she performed, who I love. I've talked about her plenty of times on this podcast. Yeah. But this album, Brat, is just fun. Like, yeah, this it is really just is. like, if you would have put her, like, 
I feel like it's kind of like her Donna Summer moment. It's just mm. disco for this generation. Yeah. Just fun. But here's the thing. So I, I love it too. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, I'm finding that in the last few years, I, um, I like listen to an album. I love the album. It's all I want to think about and listen to for like a week. Mm -hmm. And then something new comes along and I forget it. You know, like, because mm -hmm. there's just not a physical thing to hold on to anymore. Oh, right, right, right. I haven't right, invested right. any of my money in it. I haven't even done the little 99 cent little click thing like you used to have to do on the iTunes music store. Uh-huh. You know, it's like... I, go to I, Spotify. Yeah, I listen yep. to it as much as I want to. And then it's like, as much as I love it, I forget about it. Mm -hmm. And and that's happening over and over and over again. And, you know, it, it, it's just like, that's happening for me. And I love music and I, you know and I work in this industry kind of. So like that's happening to me. The 13 year olds right now, I wonder what like what their musical memories are going to be like, you know, if they're just going to like, you know, the it's the 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 streaming services are just always pushing you forward. Mm -hmm. Listen to this next thing, next thing, next thing. Mm -hmm. And and like, you know, Netflix and Hulu are like that too. You you know, even if you love something, you watch the whole thing and then you never see it again. Right. It doesn't pop up. And uh yeah, I just I I wonder if there will be the kind of investment in music. I that think there I will be. I'm I mean, it'll just be different, I guess. But yeah, it, you know, yeah. Like, where do you think? Because I, I'm, I'm looking at Charlie XCX, Sabrina Carpenter, uh -huh. uh, Chapel. Um, I'm trying to think if uh, like Muna. I love Muna oh, as well. Sure. Um, Vincent, I think is mm -hmm. great. So I'm looking at all the, you know, these up and coming artists who are just killing it right now. And then you have Jojo Siwa. Where do yep. we stand on that? <laughs> Because there was a tweet. <laughs> I did see a tweet of yours, and you were like, are we going to get the docu-series? Yeah, it does seem like <laughs> she's like, she's like, woo, booze, which is like just <laughs> such an embarrassing thing. I know. To watch a human being do. I know. It's woo. like, it's like an art. Like if we had like social media when we were teenagers, it'd be us being like, Bartles and James, am I right? Oh, yeah. Strawberry Hill. Woo! Yeah, Woo! you know. Yeah, but yeah, it's corny. It's it feels corny. Yeah, it's just it's it's a weird. It's just a weird, and it's especially weird now. Like it, yeah. it's you know, it seems like young people are drinking less and less. Well, yeah, we've all seen Euphoria. Yeah, <laughs> but I haven't seen Euphoria. I'm afraid oh, to watch that show. It's terrifying. I'm afraid to watch. You'll that never show. have a child ever. <laughs> no, well, I'm not gonna anyway. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm 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 not I'm not. I'm cutting off my own balls it. right now. Ooh boy, <laughs> I can't. No, can't do it. Yeah, um, yeah. It's it's just it just seems very weird yeah. and and not fun. Right. She doesn't like she's performing fun in a way that looks really tedious and painful. Do you think the the girls and I say the girls the the girls who were like killing it are recognizing JoJo as a peer? I don't I don't think. No. So. You think JoJo's like, "Hey guys, can we yeah. hang out?" And they're like, "Get out of here, a JoJo Siwa." But yeah, she's just yeah, she could stand to try less hard, I think. I've been saying this all along. I have, okay. I have a little question to sure. add on to this. Yes. Um, Lee, our producer, everyone. Hello, Lee, Lee, our producer. Ha have you seen anything like JoJo Siwa before? Like in pop music? Ooh. Yeah, Gremlins. Oh. <laughs> now? Okay. Like uh, in pop music. Okay, good in pop question. Music. Uh, who? Let's see. That's like really try hard but not hitting the mark. I would say someone. And like, I have someone. And like I'm, a delusional heel. I have someone. You know? And it might be like... Okay, I'm I'm, I'm going to say Aaron Carter. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. You think but that was like a... That was, he was like a child child. He was a child child. Yeah, he was like, Aaron's party! And we're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> He's like yeah, eight. You're <laughs> a yeah, child. Yeah, yeah. You're a real yeah. child. Yeah, that's a good question. Like, who's been... Hmm... It's maybe like a, it's maybe like a Stacy Q kind of a situation with Jojo yeah. Siwa. Or you know, you know who else? Willa Ford. Willa Ford. She was great. She was good. God, uh, that song still just yeah slaps. She used to uh, go to my hot room spin class. What? See with Willa at, Ford? Uh, I would see her at Sweat Cycle. She wants to be bad. Uh, sure, she wants to be bad. God. I love to see Mandy Moore doing as well as she's doing. I think she's fantastic. She's everything. She's great. God. You know who I miss? Who? I talk about her. her name comes up every now and then. Stacey Rico. Oh, sure. Sure. 
That was uh, one of my songs. Okay. I think you did that. You did that. Uh, the twenty five songs that stick with you, or twenty one. What is it that like that? If your life was a soundtrack, or what? Songs oh well, that that's stick in the your framing life? device for my yeah. uh, memoir. Yeah, I would say. Um, there's got to be oh, more to life. Oh, there's got to be more to life. Was yeah. one of my like bops. I still a, in my car just put it on. It's a jam. It's so good. It is a jam. I yeah. Know. Um, who I'm trying to think who else would be. Uh, maybe hopefully she's just an anomaly. She may be. She may yeah. be. I don't know. She. I don't know. Um, Justin she, Bieber had a moment. Sure. Yeah, but I mean, like he came through. Well, I agree. I'm trying to think if there was any other... Oh, you know, um, I would say, uh, actually, Vanilla Ice, put it, like, in the years after Ice Ice Baby, Ooh. when he was, like, when he got, like, a bunch of tattoos and tried to be, like, yeah. Cypress Hill, that was a little yes. bit like, no, nah, baby, this is not your That's lane at all. And he was like, I'm going to be an actor now. And yes. you're like, no. Yeah, cool as ice. Not even fun. It's not a bad movie. Not even good. Kind of the same thing with Brian Austin Green from 90210. A little bit. Who was like, I'm going to do... Who actually, before he was an actor, was like a, wanting to be a rapper. Yeah. And then and he, he... did a proper album. And then did an album which like tanked so hard. It did tank pretty oh, hard. I know. Uh, but he, so, he, he picked himself up and he, dusted himself off. He really did. I mean, my God, it's so it's so crazy to think of like, like how much time has gone by and like... like what you were saying, like, what will these kids' memories be from yeah. pop music? Because it's so different now. Mm -hmm. So much different now. And what, what will it be for television? Is there like a... I don't know what kids watch. I don't know what teenagers watch. I don't want to know. It's probably best we don't know. Mm -hmm. But kind of like going the into the story over the weekend, and I wanted to... Uh, this one's kind of been circulating now for a while, and um, we'll see where it goes. But Justin Timberlake got pulled over for a DWI sure in did. the Hamptons. Rich. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. if you're gonna get pulled over for DWI, do it in the Hamptons. Ask Billy Joel. Yeah, don't do it on Beverly Boulevard, Tiffany Haddish. Get a god. <laughs> Did that happen? Do, do it in the Hamptons. Do it in the Hamptons. <laughs> wow. Okay. So I I thought this was very interesting because a lot of people are worried about him because there was that video that came out or yeah. there was the mugshot. The mugshot didn't look great. And then he's like, this is going to ruin the tour. And the oh, guy, what the, tour? the police officer didn't know who he was. So I'm like, I oh. know, I know, I know. And I hate that that, well, I don't hate it because it's kind of fun, but like it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it feels cruel how often that comes up. You know, and that that's been a part of the story, and that that's what everyone's latching on to. Oh, it just I know. Feels, feels like a pile it's, on. It's which such is, a meme now, where it's like, this is going to ruin know. the tour. What tour? Yeah. The world tour. And you know what? Like, I think it was People.com or EntertainmentWeekly.com or something, if that even exists anymore. Mm -hmm. But uh, the story, and maybe it was written by AI, actually, now that I think about it, because uh, the story on I think People.com. Uh, said, you know, blah, 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 Justin Timberlake uh, gets a DUI. And then, like, the second paragraph or whatever is, the Memphis singer uh, was pulled over for blah, 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 the way that they do. Like, the, you know, the Mission Memphis. Impossible star, Tom yes, Cruise, yes. whatever. Not the in sync right. star. But it was like, the, who knows him from Memphis? Yeah. Like, who's going to read that and be like, oh, that's the guy I know from that's the song That's the guy Memphis. from Memphis, Tennessee. It's not not the uh, sexy back singer no. or the, you know, whatever. It just I would even like, take the Trolls singer. Sure. <laughs> the, the singer of the song from the Trolls yeah. movie. Branch from Trolls. Yes. Yeah. Now, now he's not, like, I saw footage of him on tour the other night and his eyes are bugging that's straight That's what I was going to say. Like, great, like, I'm going to say cocaine, It's allegedly. a little, yeah, it's a little cokey looking. Yeah. And uh, I don't know what's going on, but a lot of people are saying, speaking of Jojo Siwa, that karma is coming for Justin Timberlake because of know. his uh, treatment of Britney and the whole Super Bowl thing with Janet. Yeah. And I don't know. Yeah, and then I think also most recently, the um, one of the, the shows that he did when the album was released, um, he like in the intro to a song said, I want to take this opportunity to apologize to absolutely fucking nobody. Oh, right. There's that. Which was like, that ain't it. Yeah. Not now. Like it's, there's, you know, you you don't have to like make it the rest of your life right. to, uh, you know, apologize for it. But you do need to like meaningfully apologize. Some ownership would be great. Or at least don't 
say I'm not apologizing to anybody in front of a crowd that adores you, that you know it's going to go over well. Not in the moment, crowd, Dave. A Memphis crowd. A Memphis crowd. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's very it's very silly, and I and I do feel like people are a little bit out for blood. Because I'm gonna say, because uh, uh, I feel like yeah. Britney's book came out, and he kind of addressed something go. in that uh, same along those lines of like, I'm not gonna apologize for anything I did because there were allegations of her, him making her, you know, terminate yeah. a pregnancy, you know, uh, cheating on each other, all that stuff. Uh -huh. um, with Janet, obviously, with the whole Super Bowl incident that he just kind of like weaned away from and she kind of took all the blame for. But um, yeah, I do, it just, it does, it does kind of hurt me. Yeah, I feel like I'm affected by this because when somebody, a cop, a grown cop is like, who are you? Justin Timberlake, who? I'm yeah. like, <gasps> It's, <laughs> it's pretty like wild. Away. It's pretty wild. It's so insane. Because yeah. here's what I think went wrong. What they should have done is when NSYNC reunited, mm -hmm. um, where was it? Was um, They did it at, Co did they do it at Coachella? Was it no. all of them there with Ariana Grande? Or maybe I think it was just everyone uh, except for Justin Timberlake. Yeah, they, I but think But they it did was, it at the yeah. Grammys. Uh -huh. They reunited at the Grammys. Yeah. And everyone was like, holy shit. Like, mm -hmm. it was such a moment. And they did that. They did another song from Trolls. And we didn't, we don't right. remember it, we do we? We don't remember it. Yeah, it didn't, it didn't last. And then, and also from Trolls, there was another Justin Timberlake, Timbaland that and... Sunshine in My Pocket Nightmare. Something like that. Oh. Yeah. Heard it once and was like, oh, no. Like, uh -uh. if you... You're not like, going in. Like, if, if you want to just call it a day, just roll the windows up in your car and just put on sunship. That's, that is the waterboard of, of it's music. It's rough stuff. It's yeah. Awful. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, so he had a show on March 13th at the will turn, which was his one night only show. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I remember everyone being like, Oh my God, Justin Timberlake's here. But, um, since then, I feel like at the Grammys, they reunited. Or it was at the Wiltern. It wasn't the Grammys. It was at his Wiltern show. It was at oh, where okay. they all showed up. Yes. And everyone's okay. like, holy shit. What they should have done is what Backstreet Boys has done, which is what all of those guys have done. Do a damn tour. And they should have. Or a residency or something. Yes. And Justin you know? Timberlake said, because I even talked to Lance. I was like, are you guys going on the road? He's like, we can't really do anything because we have to see how Trolls does because the writer strike is over now and we can't really say yeah. anything. And Justin Timberlake was like, oh yeah, there's going to be more music. Mine. I'm going on tour again. Yeah. And I'm like, you asshole. I feel like he's done that to them before. He has. Uh, like my, my sort of understanding, my loose understanding of the situation was that like when he left the band uh, in whatever it was, 2001 or two sure. or whatever, um, to do the solo album. He was like, I'm just going to do the solo album and then I'll be back and we'll continue on. Mm -hmm. And so other members of the band who had, you know, solo stuff sort of in the works were like, well, let's put that on hold because we are going to, the band's going to get back together. And then they never did. So like, like JC should have had much more of a career after NSYNC. <gasps> well, JC kind of did. God, and then, look at those eyes. I know, that is that's, terrifying. That's... Cry me a liver. Cry me a liver. <laughs> Cry me a liver, baby. It's so much because it's just, oh, I I, I don't want to see it. I'm like, damn it, JT, keep it together. Yeah. Just wait. I don't need you having a meltdown. Now a lot of people are like, he needs to be in a conservatorship. Wink, uh, wink, wink. Okay. It's just, I mean, okay. people are brutal. People are, of course, brutal. Yeah. Did you get through the uh, Britney Spears book? Yes, I, I read not. it. Wow. I read it. I listened to Physical. some of it, and you I did the audio get through it. Yeah, the thing that I loved about Britney's book was it, what it would be like. Chapter one. Good morning, everybody. I'm having a good day so far. Blank page. Chapter two. Mm -hmm. Like it was the the shortest of chapters. <laughs> yeah, the shortest of chapters. It was okay. I mean, but now it, it's. Uh, I can't do this. This is so hard for me. Like. Looking at Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake, who were just like the pinnacle of late 90s, early 2000s pop culture. And yeah. just her spiraling literally in her kitchen and him, Those you know, are... just kind of falling apart. I'm like, guys. <sighs> yeah. Did you ever meet Britney Spears? Oh, many, yeah. many times. Yeah. 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 I was, um, yeah, for sure. I, I don't, I don't think. 
I was the host on her like first appearance, mm-hmm. but one of them for sure. And then, you know, she was back all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah, she she essentially, you know, lived at the studio, you know? Like, yeah, she was, she was always she was there. She was there a lot. And, so uh, hot. Yeah, she was, she was lovely. Mm-hmm. You know, I never really got the, um, I don't think I ever like got to know her. You know, because ultimately, like there would be no, you weren't best friends with Tom Cruise. <laughs> no, I mean there there was always no socializing really yeah. with like the the big stars who came through, but especially and like she was you know seventeen or whatever. Yeah, I, I know. Seven. That it would have been weird to like pursue a friendship with any of these young mm-hmm. like up and comers because they were children. Right. You know? So anyway, yeah. uh, so I never really felt like I got to like know her, know her, but she was you know a pro. Yeah, and this was an interesting uh, story as well. Uh, after Timberlake's arrest, her song Criminal from her album Femme Fatale, uh-huh. uh, which came out in 2011, jumped to number 68 on the... Or no, at the time of the of the publication, the 42-year-old pop star song was number 68 on the iTunes pop chart. Interesting. It like shot up from like 2011 to present, like the present pop charts. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, if you don't know the song, she says, Mom, I'm in love with a criminal. I don't know the song. And I'm like, well, don't know that's just your gardener, Brittany. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know. I know. Uh, although also, it looks like Somewhere Only We Know by Keen is on the charts too. I wonder why. Mm-hmm. What, because TikTok. We... Oh, is it TikTok? TikTok's bringing back songs. Huh. I'm telling you. Weird. Wait, and I do I do have a question from a uh, listener. Ooh. Um, wants to know your thoughts on Woodstock 99. Oh, well. Which yeah, I, I mean, like to call That Summer. Yeah. that was the summer that I came out. Ooh. Yeah. Where were you? Yes, I was in Texas Ooh, watching wait. Woodstock 99. I'll be damned. How television. old were you? I was... Six. Mm. <laughs> it feels like you're not being truthful. I was one of the first children to ever come out. Wow. No, yeah, I was I was 19. When you know, so. you know. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, welcome. Yeah. Uh, overdue. Yeah. Um, I, it, I, I did not enjoy Woodstock 99. We, um, so I was, you know. It was there. Awful. It was bad. Yeah. And, and it was also like uh, just a lot of the acts that I didn't like you know well, it was there was very there were very few people i wanted to see yes remember i was like most excited about cheryl crow when you're most excited about cheryl crow it's not exciting <laughs> you know what i mean hey uh, every day's a great. winding road you every know day is a winding road. it really is um uh, yeah so i was there and they um we were we had like a an area backstage we had like a production area backstage or not backstage but like behind the stage and uh, and and a few little posts that we would uh, kind of do our little segments from, mm-hmm. and and it was one of those where like the second my like job ended, like my work for the day ended, I was like, please take me back to the hotel because it was blazing hot. Yeah, it was so broy. It, it definitely there was just bad juju in the air, and I really felt like I, I just couldn't wait to leave. Well, the documentary was. Very well done. And there, I just remember yeah, a couple. Yeah, the, the I want to say I can't remember the one that came out maybe like two, three years ago. Mm. I can't remember. Um Yeah. Was that the the Netflix one? It was I, it was really, really good. Yeah, I think I'll be that's honest with the you, one. I forget which one I'm in, but I'm in one of them. You're um, yeah. yeah, it was it was it was rough. It was a bad, it was a bad it was a bad scene. <laughs> I just remember watching it and they were like, oh, you know, here's the anniversary. Yeah, train wreck, Woodstock. That's I what think, it's called. Uh um, I think I'm in the other one. Yeah, you are in the other one. I'm in the HBO Max one, I think. Yes. Yes. Anyway. Oh, okay. And I just remember all of a sudden, like breaking news and Tabitha Soren came on and Ooh. was like, Woodstock 99 is a complete disaster. It, yeah. And we saw the footage of like people swimming in porta potties and like <laughs> So there was like, was, yeah, things was, on fire. Yeah, it was it was bad. And why was that? Was that just because of Fred Durst telling everyone to break no, shit and no, set it, it on just, fire? It was it, it was a very very hot day. Yeah, it was a lot of really aggro music all at once. A boom, ba, da, boom, da, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like um, it was endless that. Yeah, and it was like on a, you know, it was on like an Air Force base. So you're essentially right. like on 
concrete. Yeah. I mean, I guess there was like a lawn, but the, the everything around it was concrete, which just like magnified the heat. And it was like six bucks for a, you know, a, right. a bottle of water. Probably didn't even have electrolytes for taste. Yeah. And that's $10, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll Venmo okay. you. Um, but yeah, it was just, it was just a, it was a bad, yeah. just a bad scene. It was and probably just like shitty drugs or whatever. Yeah. Um, America's yeah. first fire fest. I really think that's yeah. what it was. That's and, what it and, felt like. And people you know, just snapped. Yeah, they really did. This is uh, here's this is an exclusive. This is not in the documentary. But, Go uh, on. Uh, at Woodstock 99, I saw one of the most harrowing sights I've ever seen. Um, so, like I said, our, our production area was behind the stage. Mm -hmm. And near us was the first aid tent. Uh -huh. um, and so, like, people got pulled out of the mosh pit. Like People who were like, got carried by the mosh pit or, or whatever to like the front of the stage would then get like kind of put back from behind the stage to go back around and get back in the crowd. Or if they needed to see the, go to the first aid tent, they would do the same thing. So I was um, at the production tent and I, and I watched a kid like come back to go to the med tent, no shirt, like, you know, big baggy shorts, um, like pale white and a look on his face as though he had just, seen or experienced something that was too awful to uh to explain like like at, at my at first glance i thought oh this is like some sort of bad acid situation or something or he saw cheryl crow or he saw cheryl yeah. crow and just couldn't handle it and this is this is during like rage against the machine or something yeah of course but then i looked more closely and there was a uh, a trickle of blood coming down from here what um what under his arm mosh pit i think a nipple ring had been uh, had maybe caught on Ripped to something. Ripped his and nipple off. Yeah. Which still to this day makes me, like, it makes me seize up with... So he was just... Secondhand pain. Ugh. So he was just so messed up on drugs that... No, it, I think he was just, like... My nipple's gone. <laughs> yeah. Like, I that hurt so bad. Oh. Talk about shock that, he, yeah, he needed to go to... The med tent and get a new nipple. <laughs> Could you imagine? Like it's like, it's like the new like I lost a contact. You're like everyone yeah. stop. Very My soft. nipple's here somewhere. Yeah. Don't move. Yeah. We got a nipple on the ground. Yeah. God. It's the cold. Yeah. yeah, it's gross. Oh well, that was a Woo. Woodstock '99 exclusive. Yeah. Um, Sorry about but if that. you have not seen that documentary, check it out. It's yeah. incredible. Check them both out. I'm in yeah. one. Of who them. was who was the other one? It was um, it was Cheryl Crow and who who was the other female there? Was it Jewel? I think it might have been Jewel. God damn it. Yeah, it's terrible. That's all they had. Just two women. Had. That's all they yep. had. Um, yeah, that was, it was poorly, it was poorly planned. Yeah. It was really poorly planned. Yeah, let's see. We have time for a couple more things. Let's Ooh. see. We've got, this is what celebrities looked like then and now mm -hmm. from TRL. I mean, obviously we know what Justin Timberlake sure. looks like. Was, you know, he, and he, I think he's still very handsome. He's still Justin very Timberlake. handsome. I will say that... I was always more a JT guy, but... During this whole, like, Justin Timberlake... JC. What's that? I was more a JC guy. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Dark hair and blue eyes gets me It was... Time. I felt like while the girls Googled... Googled. Gaggled. I don't know what the hell I'm yeah. trying to say. Guffawed over Justin Timberlake. I feel like the 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 true essence was JC Chasse. Yeah. Who had a great solo career going... Mm -hmm. And then it all got Shelved it. ruined. Yeah. Because of Justin. Mm -hmm. Allegedly. I don't know. That's my understanding, kind of. Uh, but I mean, yeah, his solo stuff was pretty good. Yeah. He had blown me up with your love. Blowing like that was up Tara Reed love. was in the video. Sure. Oh, so Tara good. Tara Reed. Tara Reed. There's every now and then I wake up and think, Tara Reed. Tara Reed. <laughs> yeah. Or sometimes I'll be out and someone's like, Tara Reed's sitting right next to me at Barney's Beanery. And I'm like, Really? Oh, yeah, she hangs up there all the time. I, okay, so the last time I was at Barney's Beanery, uh, it was karaoke night because I think it's karaoke night. Yeah, it's like always karaoke night week. there. Um, but I was talking to some folks and from behind me, uh, somebody was doing Lightning Crashes by Live oh. karaoke. And I was like, this guy really sounds like Ed from Live. And I turned around and it was Ed from Live. At Barney's Beanery? his own song. At karaoke at Barney's Beanery. And it was still amazing. Well, no. I mean, I guess, you know, it depends on your definition of the word amazing. Oh, that was a great song, though. I That's not my fave from them. Yeah. But whatever. Um, here we have yeah. Pink, There's Pink, who is still killing it. Sure. She is now uh, in Cirque du Soleil. She really is. Uh, yeah, no, she's she's incredible. 
But you remember it's when- It's so wild to like revisit Lady Marmalade and be like, Pink is the one who has endured from that gang. Yeah. You know? Really? Yeah. I, I also remember very first Pink. Sure. There you go, looking mm-hmm. pitiful, mm-hmm. Just, just because, because I let, let you go. go. That one. Rhyming go Sometimes with go and like in a, that. An auspicious uh, start. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, I would never have imagined we would still be talking about I know, I was like... 24. I know. I remember her hair being pink and being like, oh, well, we're just calling her pink? What if she mm-hmm. wants to dye her hair another color? Mm-hmm. And well, she's, she's done it. She's done it. And we still call she's, her pink. I know. She's still that doing it. That is a straight up great uh, voice. Justin Timberlake look. Uh, <laughs> that and, is, uh, yes. Or, I think, yeah, that is surely. Is she trying you know to what? look this like is, Justin Timberlake? No, I think this is OG Ice Spice. I think oh, this yeah, is, I think you're right. <laughs> this is I think you're her right. little Shirley Temple yeah, Ice yeah. Spice. Wow, we. Isn't that crazy? And then we here have Lance. There's Lance. Lance is doing his sure. thing. Still killing it. Um, oh, There's Brittany. God. Get it together, Brittany. I, I it's so I know. Uh, I, this is a flattering now picture. That's a flattering it picture is. of her. But like that's the thing I want to see. I want to see like Cher just performed at the Abbey not too long ago. Oh yeah? Yeah, just showed up and was like, Girls, I'm strong enough. And everyone yeah. like that's what I want one day. I want to be at like high tops <sighs> and Brittany shows up and we're all like, <gasps> like I just I don't know what I want her to do. Uh I I feel like stay home. I mean, I don't want to I don't want her to be imprisoned inside her home, but well, stay I mean, home. You know? She just can't go outside without, like, making a scene or yeah. doing something dumb. Kevin Federline, would you? <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. On my own podcast? On your own podcast. <laughs> Kevin Federline an now or then? Then. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Yeah. Same. It feels awful to say. It but, feels gross. Yeah. But, but there was something, there was sort of like... A kind of small town weed dealer hotness yes. to him back in the day. Yes. You know what I mean? Dirty, Dirty trade. Dirty trade. Dirty rat boy alley. Rat, the original yeah. rodent boyfriend, you might uh, yes, say. Yes, yes. Yeah. No deodorant. Yeah. No. Like told his mom to shut up. And Absolutely. You're like, oh. Yes. Who is he? Yes. Mom, I'm in love with a criminal. Um, I'm yep. in love with a criminal. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Chaotic. Like, chaotic. Oh, uh, God. That was such a mess of a show. Never watched. You never did? Never did. Oh, just go, just go to YouTube and type in chaotic oh, and just I don't watch know. the highlights. I think it's going to make me feel bad. She's like, huh? What? Oh, like, God. oh, it's just that crack jaw. I had that going. once with being Bobby Brown. I don't need it again. Woo, with, uh, that was another one. Des- I mean, Desi's Child, for God's sakes. Like, yes. I mean, these girls are still killing it. Still Kelly killing Roll- it. Kelly Rowland's pushing bitches down the stairs at Cannes. Beyonce's, That's right. Beyonce's being Beyonce. Michelle is in Death Becomes Her on Broadway coming up. Woo. I, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Ooh. She plays the uh, the potion lady in okay. Death Becomes Her. I'll be damned. I know. I'm okay. really excited for it. I, Great. I, I love Michelle. Love Which it. no one says a lot, you know? And I, yeah. she's very, very talented. Miley Cyrus. Um, mm-hmm. Was Miley on MTV? I guess she was at I some point. I bet she was, but way after my time. Yeah. That, that is perhaps a Damien Fahey arm we're seeing next to uh, Miley Cyrus. Yeah. Uh, Do you talk to Carson Daly? I I haven't seen Carson in a million years. Yeah. But Damien and I are good friends. Oh, okay. Um, we never worked together, but uh, yeah. But he lives out here, and we're we're tight. He is uh, a great guy. Okay. Yeah. Uh oh, Jennifer Lopez. Like I don't like the paparazzi. I don't I don't I don't like feeling. I don't like the feeling of people's privacy being invaded. Yeah. Makes me feel bad. But you could I. I you never stop showing me pictures of uh, Ben Affleck smoking, sadly, or carrying too many things from Dunkin' Donuts yeah. it's, or whatever. Like, I, that is a genre that it, that I love. That needs to be its own, like, like category of pop culture. Ben yes. Affleck, outside of a Dunkin' Donuts, yes. looking miserable, smoking. I've not, he's the only celebrity I've ever seen smoking and holding coffee outside yeah. of a Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. And like, and he's constantly doing it, and he always looks like he's having the worst possible day. I know. And I, I love it. I do too. I love it. You love it's, that for him having I a horrible do. day. <laughs> I do. It's uh, my favorite. Genre. Kim Kardashian. I mean, sure. I don't care. No one does. No. Shakira. 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 Yeah. Uh, 
Yeah. This reminds me of, I want to say, 1999, uh -huh. when the Latin explosion happened with Ricky Martin, Jennifer sure. Lopez, uh -huh. Enrique Mark Iglesias. Mark Anthony. Mark Anthony. Because you sing to me. That Ooh. one. Yep. Um, and uh, and who, Enrique Iglesias, by the way, the hottest person I've ever seen in real life. Oh, my God. He is, he's like, it's hotter. It's who's upsetting. hotter, Ricky, Enrique? Oh, Enrique. What? Yes. Is this our first you, fight? I don't know. <laughs> um, no, he's. Have you seen Enrique Iglesias in person? I would. You I would, would implode. Your fucking tune. I would what prolapse you would out of my own butthole. <laughs> yeah, it's. He's so. He's absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> I'm sure. Uh, beautiful like if, eyes, and he's like, and he's taller than you think he's gonna be. Really? Yeah. Did you check the boot? He doesn't have a lift on his shoe? He might have. Okay. I don't know. I don't care. Okay. Um, yeah, he's he's something else. Was I, the mole there or gone? The mole was there. Oh. It, it does seem weird that he got rid of it. I know. Uh, it wasn't that bad. Yeah. It was, Lindsay I, Lohan. Lindsay Lohan. Uh, I guess they have started filming on I Freaky saw Friday that. 2. Freaky Friday 2. Still freaky. One, still um, freaky? Is that Gwen really? Stefani. No. No. Oh, Gwen. Gwen... Gwen, Gwen. Yeah. I feel like Gwen Stefani missed the. Not, no, I'm going to take it back. She was a little old for TRL in the sense that no, no doubt started in '96, '95, '96, and, and then, then Return of Saturn came out in '98 or '99. '98, '99, and, and they then, were around a lot. Yeah, and then, and then her solo career. Yeah, obviously. Um, um, yeah, I think that she is great. I do too. Um, Blake Shelton does nothing for me. Um. So, uh, she also like I just feel she, she's now in that in that like time of her life and career where just, it just seems like literally everything is monetized you yes. know and, like there are like a ton of businesses and yes. creams and essential no oil diffusers anything. and yeah. whatever yeah and it's just it's all it's like a QVC kind of a moment right when the having. artist goes QVC and it's just like move here smile yeah. go home like it's just very like I don't know yeah, and I feel like she's at a time where she could just kind of, you know, relax. Yeah, and but she's what J Lo needs to do. Yes, mm -hmm. um, the No Doubt reunion at Coachella. I was not there, but we watched it on the on the live stream. Yeah. It was unreal. It of course, was that's what we want. Yeah, we she want that reunion. Fantastic. We're like, yes, we remember yeah. that time. It was so much fun. Mandy Moore dancing God. up a storm. There she is. With Sh now, where's Shane West? Now, I yeah. ask you. Uh, yeah, Mandy Moore is fantastic. I bumped into her husband at the Studio City Farmer's Market. Mm -hmm. Not to name drop. I mean, um, if you're going to bump into Mandy Moore's husband, it's mm -hmm. going to be at a farmer's market. Uh, yeah. He is uh, the lead singer of Dawes, mm. who are a great band. He is also very, very handsome. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, really good style. Good. I'm a, I'm a fan of his. He's a nice guy. Okay, so let's play a quick game. Yes. This is called uh, Team Player. Uh -huh. And we have Brittany, Christina. You have yeah. to pick one. Brittany. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. I Christina obviously has a good voice, but I I also feel like I get it. Favorite Britney song? Ooh. Yeah. I'm not to be basic, but probably "Baby One More Time." Yeah. I mean, it's it's a perfect pop song. OG. Yeah. That that is, uh, mine's overprotected. I like that one. Okay. That one's a sure. good one. Yeah. Uh, in sync. Backstreet Boys. Guess, and the feud. I guess in sync. Yeah. I guess in sync. Yeah. I'd I probably like more. Backstreet Boys songs. Mm -hmm. but I think I like Insync better. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Destiny's Child and Pussycat Dolls. Oh, Destiny's Child I know, by I know. a mile. Don't you? Come on. Uh, but uh, you. But also, you don't loosen buttons. No. They're either done or they're undone. You I don't know. loosen a button. <laughs> do you know what I just found Look, out? This, now this is what you do with a button. You you and then you it. undo it. Yeah, you don't loosen it. You don't loosen a button. You know what else I found out not too long ago that what? it's not uh, when I grow up. I want to be famous. I want to have boobies. It's groupies, right? The whole time I, I was just so singing that I want to have boobies, and mm -hmm. people were like, "Who is it this does predator?" Like boobies. It sounds yeah. like boobies. It sounds like boobies. Yeah. Okay, here we have uh, Green Day and mm -hmm. Blink-182. Uh, Green Day. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Green yeah. Day's just really cool. We're not going to get a rock opera from Blink-182. You know? Or are we? Or are we? I feel like if if the Trey Parker, <laughs> the South Park guy's going to hold of it, they might. Maybe. Uh, okay. And finally, Mandy Moore and JoJo. The original JoJo. Just JoJo, not see what not JoJo. Siwa. Oh, Mandy. I know. You know what? That covers album that she did mm -hmm. is awesome. Mm -hmm. She's got great taste. 
Yeah. She's yeah, I love her. I, I love, love her as an artist. Yeah. All right. I'm, here is in our okay. final our final segment. Yes. These are the number one songs for each year. Oh. I actually kind of want to see if you can do this without looking. That's okay. you on the spot. But okay. it is okay. So we have 1998. What do you think the number one song of 1998 was? Number one song for of the year. Uh-huh. I I bet it's mm, I bet it's uh I don't want to miss a thing. No, close, but it's yeah, no, it's not that, but it is The Boy Is Mine by Brandy oh, and Monica. Oh, okay, sure, sure. Summer 98. Summer of 98. That was it. Okay. 99. 99 would have, oh, maybe I want it that way? Yes, Backstreet Boys, okay. I want it that way. All right. 2000, flip the script, same genre. Mm -hmm. 2000, uh, same genre. I don't know. Think of Justin Timberlake's career. Oh. Um, Where has it gone? 2000. Um, uh, Three words. Oh. I, they might be the same word. <laughs> gone, gone, gone? Close. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs> gone, gone, gone. Go, um, <laughs> yes, oh, bye, bye, okay. bye. Okay, okay. That's right. Oh, I forgot about it. Yeah, forgot all um, about it. And then uh, 2001, we have... <sighs> uh, I, I will, it's, I'll give you a hint. Okay. It had a Titanic reference in the song. Oh, uh, oops, I did it again. There you go. Okay. 2002 was, oh, this one, this one was new. I didn't know this one. Mm, 2002. This was a rapper. A rapper. He is white. White rapper. Oh, um, oh, Lose Yourself. No, close, Without Me. Oh. Na, 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 na. Wait, number one, based on what? Exactly. <laughs> Are these like the? Just, is it the number one it, song? It was, it was Billboard's no. Billboard's oh, number one songs okay. of the year. Wow, that song yeah. was that big. I hate yeah. that song. I know. I hate. I don't it like too. his new song either. Which he has a new one. He has a new song. Haven't even heard that, of it. That's getting canceled on TikTok. It's oh, is getting it really? canceled? Yeah, the, yeah. Gen Z is trying to cancel Eminem, oh. and they are just way off base. Yeah, it's funny. Wow. <sighs> well, to follow it up, we have 2003 into club with 50 Cent. Uh, that makes sense. Sure. We have 2004. I remember getting that on the iTunes Music Store? Mm -hmm. 99 cents. Yep. Yes, I in will. The club. Yeah. Uh, number Nin four. Yeah. Usher. Still okay. Played at weddings. Great. Great. 2005, Beautiful. We Belong Together by Mariah Carey. Mm, which God. I was kind of like, what? That's coming on 20 years ago. That's so crazy. Mm -hmm. 2006, this one threw me. Do you remember Daniel Powder? Bad Day? That was That's it. That's the number one song of the year? Because you had a bad day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, oh. Yeah, it was when they, like, when you got kicked off American Idol, they would play it. He was on American Idol? No, he wasn't. Oh. But like, it would be your on your goodbye montage. Yeah, go on get. Yeah. Oh right, they were they like would play beat that it. song. Yeah. Yeah. Was that where Ellen was a judge? Probably. <laughs> no. No, I don't think so. Okay. Well, not yet. Um. Two thousand seven. God, Beyond that's, I forgot that happened. What the Daniel Powder? No, Ellen. <laughs> on well, uh, American Idol, I completely I, I forget forgot Ellen happened that too. That happened. Yeah, I know. <sighs> she judged talent. Could you imagine? Crazy. Uh, Two thousand seven. Irreplaceable by Beyonce. Uh huh. Which I will only listen to those three Polynesian women. I think they're Polynesian, or they may be like from Africa. Have you seen the one? And they're just like turale, turale. Oh, I did those just see women. that. Yeah. That's the oh. only the only version Love of that it. song I will listen to. Love. In, in the words of Chapel Roan. Yeah. Click, click, click. <laughs> click, click, click. And finally, 2008. Low by Flo Rida, which wow. every woman who loves wine will drop it in a heartbeat. You know that's right. Oh, yeah. Boots um, with the fur. Uh, apple bottom jeans. Uh, Boots with the fur. Shorty got low, uh, low, low. Flo Rida, who uh, represented, I think, maybe San Marino mm -hmm. in the Eurovision Song Contest a few years ago. That makes sense. Yeah. Wow. You don't have to be from the country that you're... Singing for. Yeah. I, yeah I, they, why? It didn't work. It didn't win. But <laughs> no. I don't even know if he But made it the finals. journey was there. The journey is really. And I'm so sad the, the journey ends now with Aww, you. What a Justin. wonderful, 
fun episode. Thank you so much this for being been so here. Much fun. Thank Dave, you. Dave, tell me. everyone, please, where they can find you, follow you, what you have coming up, working on, uh, all that. I'm on all the things at Dave Holmes except for TikTok. Um, because I'm afraid of TikTok. Um because you are mentally healthy. Well, oh, so, sort of. Yeah. You know, the Depends on the day. Um, <laughs> but I um, I just uh, released a podcast uh, about kind of the story of MTV called Who Killed the Video Star? The Perfect. Story of MTV. All eight episodes are out now. Also, I was a, uh, a co-producer on a documentary that is out now on Netflix called Outstanding, A Comedy Revolution. It's yes. about uh, gay and lesbian uh, and bisexual and transgender comedians. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, it's great. Uh, I'm very happy with how it, uh, it turned out. It's good. on Netflix now. Good, good, good. Well, thank you so much for being here and we will see you guys guys next time on the Just Saying Podcast. Make sure to rate, review, subscribe, leave a comment, help the algorithm move along, keep us on the countdown, uh, and we will see you next time. Happy summer, guys. Take care. Bye. Bye.